All right, today's lesson is lesson number 71. We're going to be factoring using multiple methods. So take a second to think about the methods that we've talked about so far. We started with identifying and factoring out the GCF. Then we talked about Xbox and difference of squares and finally factoring by grouping. So we have different methods to use. Here are the steps then. So basically we're going to always start with the GCF and then after that you want to think of what the best strategy is to proceed. So it might be to use difference of squares or maybe we can use an Xbox or factor by grouping. And after you do one of these you should always check and see if you can factor it any further. So maybe you factor by grouping and then one of the terms is a difference of squares. So you can continue to factor that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out that I didn't talk about yesterday is that for factoring by grouping you have to have an even number of terms. So it could be four terms or six or eight, etc. Usually we'll just have four but they have to pair off for grouping, so it has to be an even number of terms. Okay, and if we have three, then we're going to use Xbox. So uh, we just use factor by grouping for four or more even terms. And finally, once you can't factor anymore, you'll write your final answer as the last factored form that you had. Okay, and don't forget the GCF when you're writing your answer. Um, if you had it in the beginning and don't... Uh, don't forget about that. Okay, so one and two are our first examples. For number one, I'm going to start by looking for a GCF. I see that they all have four in common, so and that's the biggest number they have in common. They also, um, one has x squared, one has x, and one doesn't have a variable, so they don't have any variables in common, so the greatest common factor is just four. When I factor that out, dividing each of those terms by 4 gives me this. So now I'm going to look um, to see how to proceed. So difference of squares doesn't really make sense here because I have three terms, right? For difference of squares, I need two terms and subtraction between them. So that's not going to help me here. Moving on to Xbox, um, I see that this is is of the correct form, right? It looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to go ahead and go with um, xbox. I know a is 1, my b is 6, and c is 8. So I'll make my xbox. I put a on either side. ac is 1 times 8, which is 8. That goes on top. And then b is just 6. So that goes on bottom. All right now I'm going to look at factors of 8 that add to 6. So I know I have 8 and 1, and 4 and 2. 4 plus 2 gives me 6, so those are the factors that I'll use. I'm looking to see if I can simplify these fractions, and I can't. So I'm going to write this as the factored expression. Remember, I just kind of tilt it on its side and add my variable. So this is 1x, or just x, plus 4, times 1x plus 2, or just I can just put x plus 2. And I don't want to forget about my GCF. I'm looking and it would look, it seems like I really can't factor this anymore, right? I don't have a difference of squares in either of these parentheses. And I can't factor by grouping. They're already only two terms. So that's going to be my final answer. Okay, I can't do grouping. So that's my final answer there. Okay, moving on to number two. I see that I have a common factor of 4, so I'm going to factor that out. I'm left with x squared minus 4. Looking inside the parentheses, I notice that both of those terms are perfect squares, and there's subtraction between them, so I'm going to use difference of squares here. Okay, to do that, I start by taking the square root of each term. So I have the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. For my answer, remember for difference of squares, I have two sets of parentheses. I put the, first, the square root of the first term in the beginning, square root of the second term at the end, and then I make one positive and one negative. Again, I shouldn't forget about my GCF, so I put the 4 down there. 
and I can't factor this anymore, so I am done here. I can't do Xbox or groups, so that's my final answer. Okay, if you weren't in class today or didn't feel the need to write this down in class, take a second and pause here. Add this to your notes so that you can look back at it to study for our quiz and test. Okay, numbers three and four, the first thing I'm going to do is look for a common factor. I have a common factor of two here. And then when I factor that out, I'm left with this. Again, I can't do difference of squares because there's more than two terms, so I'm going to move on and see if I can do Xbox. That'd be a good strategy here since I have three terms, so I write out what my A, B, and C are. And I'll fill out my Xbox. So A goes here, A, C, and B. And I'm looking for factors of negative 12 that add to negative 1. I notice that negative 4 times 3 gives me negative 12, and negative 4 plus 3 will give me negative 1. So that's going to give me the factors that I need. I'll look at the fractions now. And I see that I can't simplify those. I can't simplify it any farther, so I will write my factored expression. Remember, I just tilt these on the side. This gives me x minus 4 times x plus 3. And the GCF goes in front. It's a 2. And looking inside the parentheses, I can't factor either of those anymore. So that's my final answer. And moving on to 4, my GCF is 3. Factoring that out gives me this. And now I'm looking at the parentheses. I'm thinking what's the best strategy for me moving forward. I see that there's four terms. I can't add any of those together, right? They're all different, um, different exponents on my variables. So it's four terms, which tells me I want to use factor by grouping. So I'll look at the factors of each of the coefficients. I see that the last two have a three in common. And the first two really just have a 1 in common for the coefficients, but they also have an n squared in common. So that's what I'll factor out of those two terms. Since they're already next to each other, I don't have to rewrite the expression, so I'll just go ahead and I'll leave my 3. And then on the inside of the parentheses, I'm factoring out n squared, so I'm left with n from n cubed. That? n cubed divided by n squared just gives me n. And then... 2n squared divided by n squared gives me positive 2 n, or positive 2. Okay, and then for the next two, I have a 3 in common, but I also have a negative in common, so I'm going to factor out the negative 3. When I divide this by negative 3, I'm left with a positive n. And when I divide this by negative 3, I'm left with a positive 2. Okay, I'll just put another um, parenthesis on the end there to close off the inside. All right, now looking at this, continuing inside the parentheses with my factoring by grouping, I see that I have this n plus 2 in common. Okay, so I'm going to factor that out now. So now besides just the 3 being out, I also have n plus 2. And then I'm left with n squared minus 3 on the inside. When I factor the n plus 2 out of each of these, that's what I'm left with. Okay, so I get n squared minus 3. And right here, I could continue if this was, for example, say this was n squared minus 4. Then I would have to take it another step to do n plus 2 to n times n minus 2, right? It would be difference of squares. But it's not. It's a 3 here, which is not a perfect square. So I can't do, a, do any of the other methods anymore. So I am done. Okay, and finally, just as a um, kind of closing problem, I had the last class work on number 5. So take a second if you're watching the video. Pause here and think about what your strategy would be in solving number five. So what would you do first? And then think about what you would be left with and how you would continue to factor from there. Okay, so first you'd get a GCF of four. You'd factor that out and be left with P squared minus 11P plus 30. 
Okay, inside here you can do an X box and you would use the factors negative 5 and negative 6 because those add to negative 11 and multiply to a positive 30. So you get P minus 5 times P minus 6 and you remember your GCF there. So that would be your final answer. You can't factor that any further, so at this point you would be done. Okay, we didn't do number six, but um, here we have some independent practice problems. If you want to make sure you're doing this correctly, you can take a second and pause here. Okay, so pause the video to try some of these problems out. I'm going to go ahead and click forward to the answer slide. All right. And this would be the answers for those eight problems. Okay, so here um, on number five, you would end up with n squared if you stopped at six times n squared minus one times five n plus six. Um, you could have gone one step further here and separated it to um, into n minus one and n plus one. Um, what else would have been weird? So, yeah, I think that's it. Number eight, also, in case you're wondering, this part. Remember, if I have that squared, that's the same as 4k plus 1 times itself. Okay, so if that's the answer that you got, that's also correct. All right, that is the end of this lesson. So thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.